In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Nice to have you all. You can come to the front, please, as much as possible, because uh, we'll ease the interaction tonight. <clears throat> Wait, let's stop last time. Verse 21. Okay. We'll go from 20. Okay. So uh, last time we stopped at uh, Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 9. And uh, we stopped at verse uh, 20. That's where we're going to continue from. So just to recap really quick. What happened here is that uh, Adil also reminded us last time that Daniel starts from uh, from from chapter one to chapter six, uh, and you find like yourself going in events. Like the first chapter, he's uh, new with his friends and they're fasting, and then the chapter two, you find him also like with the king with the with the with the first dream, and then uh, chapter three, the three young men in the fire furnace and then chapter four you find him uh again coming back um with the uh, with another dream and then chapter five you find uh the the new king um kind of like defile the vessels of uh, the temple and then chapter six you find daniel in the den uh, because of his uh, integrity because of his faithfulness to God and continuing to be in 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 God um uh king like a uh, way of life uh not leaving God's word in spite of whatever that's happening in his life and then chapter 7 and 8 we find those uh you know from chapter 1 to 6 you find Daniel interpreting uh dreams and visions in chapter 7 and 8, Daniel is seeing visions, dream and a vision, right? And he was asking about an, an interpretation for what he sees. And then in uh, at the end of chapter 8, we find that Daniel, uh, if you read that the last verse in chapter 8, and I, Daniel, fainted and was sick for days. Afterward, I arose and went about, you got it? Yeah, uh, and uh, went about king's business. I was astonished by the vision, but no one understood it. And that's how we spoke a little bit about uh, the reasons. Um, and then we come into chapter nine last week, and Adil spoke beautiful about uh, how he's approaching this, um, you know, dilemma, and how he started to pray fast and to to pour his heart out and even though he was like not uh at, at fault in many cases yet he was offering uh a confession uh offering repentance and saying like we've sinned we've done wrong things lord and then we started reading the prayer and now we're coming into this part the verse 20 and basically now we're going to see how god is going to respond to Daniel in his prayers. And it's a beautiful uh, response as we're going to see. And we're also going to take uh, talk about what is it that I'm looking in my relationship with God. When I'm in confusion, when I'm like, I don't know even like God revealed to me so many things. And I'm just like in the midst of it all. I'm just like, God, what is it that you're trying to talk to me about? Right? And uh, he does not only get an answer, but he gets very important two messages that we're going to see, right? Uh, very important two messages that each and every one of us should be getting whenever we stand in front of God to pray. Two messages that each and every one of us, whenever we come to church, whenever we open the Bible, we need to seek and to find, okay? So with that in mind, so you're going to be looking for two messages, okay? Uh, we start reading Daniel chapter tw uh, 9, uh, verse 20. So he goes, now while I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sin 
and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Okay? Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man, Gabriel, the man, Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reach me about the time of evening offering and he informed me and talked with me and said okay just gonna before he delivered the message just pause a little bit now you have gabriel who is gabriel huh the angel the archangel gabriel what do we know about archangel gabriel messenger what messages did we hear before this or we know like the main message the perception of this. yes yes and it's one of the main ones that we usually have like in all churches wherever you go in the coptic church you find right away the icon of archangel gabriel announcing um the coming of the messiah the lord jesus christ to the world to saint mary right so what do you expect that he's gonna announce to daniel okay before that what other message do we hear very famous about dan about gabriel you got it right the first one is the most important one is the annunciation of the birth of the lord jesus christ and mary conception yes what's the other also a very important message i have a question here Buna. yes when you said uh, at, a little bit earlier, when you said that Daniel was confessing his sins and the sin of his people, why did yes. Daniel feel the need to to confess the sins of his people? Why not just own personal sins? Uh, is this Michael? My, Michael's with me, but I'm Michael's friend. My name is John Yabona. Hi. Okay. See? <laughs> no, I know okay, it's hard to believe this is Michael. I know. No, it's no, hard. no, no. That's good. That, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> John, right? Yes, you want Good. Excellent question, John. Um, and this is what the beautiful part about Daniel is, is that he does not see himself apart from the congregation of God. And that is a very important um, uh, perception, a very important mindset. As Christians, we have to have even more than Daniel. He's from the Old Testament, right? But in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus Christ, and like especially St. Paul, St. Paul speaks a lot about saying Christ is the head, right? And the church is the body, body. of Christ. So when one part, when, when, uh, when like uh, one part of the body is aching, the rest of the body is attending to it. Mm. So, Daniel, even though when I don't make mistakes, when I am not sinning, right, I need to be praying for those who are struggling, right? But also on the other side, St. Paul says in Romans, for there is no one is pure and without blemish, even his life be a single day on earth. Right, so every one of us is somehow uh, is is tainted with that sin. Okay, yes, there are people who are just going about their business, sinning left, right, and center, and like drinking wa uh, sin like water. But also, even those who are not sinning, their part is actually to pray to those who are struggling to start repentance, and those are. Until today, our fathers, like the monks and the nuns, outside in the deserts and like wilderness and um, monasteries, this is their first job, is they're actually praying for the whole world, mm. right? Does that give you an idea? Yeah. Is it yeah. like Christ, I think it was St. Paul, uh, who said uh, it was by man, uh, one man that sent unto entered the world and by sin came death 
And then he talks yeah. about Christ, how through one man again, we were saved. Is that the same concept again? Or is that my like stretching it too by far? By one man, he's referring to Christ. He, yeah. By one man, sin entered into the world. He's referring That's to Adam. Adam and Eve. Yeah. By one man, he's referring to Christ. Okay. 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 Thank you, Buona. Very Great. good. No, very good. So this is very good to, to, to understand where we're coming from. So when I come to church, when I pray, I just don't pray to for myself, right? It's it, it's it, it cannot be. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, when he taught the disciples, he taught them to pray and say, Our Father. Okay. He did not say when you pray, say my father. He said, Our Father. So, like we're all together into this. Okay, so every time I look to my brother or sisters as like, oh, I'm better than them. Uh, uh, that's not, that's not how we should look. Adul. Uh, no, but I, I just want to make sure that you know that Daniel feels here that he's a leader. He's the leader of all the Israelites in captivity, and he's praying. All his prayers is goes around God. When are we going back to our homeland? He's not praying for himself. He's not praying to get more position. Daniel now is almost 90 years old, and in, in he's like having a very high ranking uh, position in the kingdom. So he's comfortable, he's happy. Uh, he's in the last days in his life, so he doesn't really care that much to go back, to go back to Israel, because he knows that he's gonna die very soon. So he's praying, he's worried, his concerns all about my people, when are they going to come back? That's the feel of being a, the feeling of being a leader. This is the leadership. So he's praying on behalf of his people as a leader. Okay. And as a good leader, he feels that he's a sinner like all of them. He did not exclude himself from being a sinner, even though, as, as we said last time, that the Bible, the book of Daniel, did not mention a single sin for Daniel. For the last 90 chapters, no, there is no, nothing, nothing. Even though the Bible sometimes, as you know, focuses or centers on the weakness of, 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 of the prophets. The Bible explained very well the weakness of uh, David, of Abraham, of all everyone. Like The Bible didn't shy from talking about it. However, for Daniel, not a single sin. And yet he feels that he's a sinner among all his people. And that's what he cares about. When these people are going to go back. Very good. Thank you, Adul. And like Adil said, and even to make uh, matters worse, like he's feeling he's he's reaching his the end of his life, but also knowing that after 70 years, and this is kind of like approaching like almost like the 70th year, of that of their exile so he's like kind of also like I lost like days. like where we're here the 70th year so where is this happening so i something will we must have messed up somewhere or like something is happening so no that's good so i hope that uh, explained things uh john john okay um okay so now hold that thought Gabriel announced the birth of John the Baptist, right? Remember that? And uh, Archangel Gabriel announced the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ to St. Mary. So hold that thought right there because we're coming to something similar. Okay? So, um, and then we find that now Gabriel was sent and was like underlined that word uh, in verse 21. He caused to fly swiftly, like very fast. <laughs> and, uh, angels just fly by nature like they're fast. Okay. Swiftly, that means like even faster. To reach me about the time of the evening offering. Evening offering. The evening offering. Do you know what's happening in the evening offering? You know where this is coming from? Any idea? The evening offering, do you know where it's coming from? Isn't it like modern day or Vespers? 
good. You're jumping ahead. Very good. Good job. Yes. Huh? Uh, yes. Good. Yeah, the day starts usually from Vespers. Yeah. Good. But wh where, where did it start? Where did it start originally? Hmm? It started originally with Moses. God told Moses that Aaron, tell Aaron that he needs to keep prayers very important. The offering in the morning and the offering in the evening, right? Inside the tent or the tabernacle and then later on it's the temple so the offering is supposed to be offered where hmm? in the temple and where is daniel in captivity right but what what's so special now you notice that now you know this this information what's so special about daniel Even though he's not, even though he's not in Jerusalem, not in the temple, he does not give himself an excuse not to pray at the time of the offering of the evening. You get it? Like he says, oh, this is the time that we're supposed to be in the temple praying and offering a sacrifice. <laughs> okay um, but actually and that's the beautiful part is that God was actually accepting his prayers at that time as a sacrifice and the sacrifice of the evening is 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 not a, a sac like um an animal sacrifice but it's a it's a it's an incense sacrifice it has to be offered offering a sacrifice of incense. So I'm just going to share with you here uh, a prayer that the priest, uh, if you attend evening uh, or like uh, vespers, uh, raising of incense in the church, what Abuna, the priest prays at that moment, and especially like the very first um, instant uh, point where Abuna starts putting uh, incense, Right, and uh, there is a uh, incense being offered by the altar, uh, and he said the uh, he says the following: the priest, uh, in my case, I the priest pray. It's such a beautiful prayer. O Christ, our God, the Great, Awesome, and True, the only begotten Son and Logos of God the Father. Okay, you remember this prayer from last week. What Adil was saying, when you come, when 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 Daniel stood before God and started to address God, what he said, great. "Oh great God, you're great, and who's like you, and who's, you're amazing, right?" Exactly the same way, and then Abuna continues, "Ointment poured forth in your holy name, and in every place." Incense is offered to your holy name and a pure sacrifice. What is this incense that is offered to your holy name? Yes, I'm putting an incense now in front of the altar and there is like smoke coming out. But God, this is the least, but the actual prayer is that the prayer of each and every one that are praying it from their own hearts, every place being offered to your holy name in every place okay and then abuna continues we ask you our master receive our prayers to yourself let our prayers be set forth before you as incense the lifting what is this what is this uh, 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 a prayer as an incense he says the lifting up of our hands, the evening sacrifice. So when you look at Daniel, he's standing, offering his body as a sacrifice. Here is not a sacrifice like 
he's sacrificing the rest of his body at that moment in the evening. You know, when you come back from work, when you're tired, when you're like, oh, I just need to rest. Usually we do that, right? But Daniel is standing and saying, no, I'm going to offer my body to be standing and to offer my hands to be a sacrifice. And that is the evening offering and incense to you, God. For you are the true evening sacrifice who has offered yourself upon the honored cross for our sins according to the will of your good father. Um, <clears throat> and Abuna continues with the rest of the prayer. Uh, but what I'm trying to say here is that that is the mind of the church, and that is the same mind that Daniel had, is that wherever it is, wherever I am, at the time of offering, I will be standing. If I can, I'll be at church. I'll be at the time or place that is supposed to. But if I can't, I'll still offer that. And that's why you know, that he mentions, reach me about the time of evening offering. So we're reading from Daniel chapter 9, verse 21. Okay? Yes. Yes. But the sacrifice, the evening sacrifice or the offering is an incense. Is an incense offering. Hmm? Uh, it's covered uh, until the Lord Jesus Christ takes away the sin. The true sacrifice. So in the Old Testament, the blood of the sacrifice covers the sin. Right? Jesus Christ takes away the sin. His blood takes away the sin. Okay? Um, so, the evening offering. So, we need to take from here that I, I need to pray, right? I need to pray and remember the prayers wherever I am, regardless of how I feel, regardless of how uh, like uh, I'm being um, set up. Because Daniel at the time, like not in the best uh, place to be like in, in, in prayer state, okay? But yet he said, no, I'm going to pray. Because this is what needs to happen. Because that's the only thing I have to offer. So Archangel Gabriel uh, informed me and talked with me and said. And now here's the first message. When we stand to pray. Oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. Yeah, you get it? Like Daniel at the beginning could not understand. So now he's telling him to give you skill to understand. But to give you the skill to understand, there is something important. At the beginning of your supplications, the command went out. And I have come to tell you, for you are greatly loved. Greatly loved. Now, Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel coming to tell Daniel, you are greatly loved. And this is the first message. When we stand before God any time to pray or to read the Bible or to serve or or the very first message is you are loved. You are accepted. You're greatly loved. You're amazing before anything. Okay. And that's important thing. It's important message. To get it that you are loved. I love you. Okay. Uh, therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Okay. Now he's going to talk about the second message. And the second message is even more important. You are loved and you are meeting Christ. This is what Daniel, uh, Archangel Gabriel is going to tell Daniel. That you are to meet Christ. 
are going to see Christ. Okay, so um, he told him the following. 70 weeks are determined. 70 weeks are determined. Now I want you to take out your calculators and start texting. I mean, not <laughs> and start uh, calculating something. Take out your phones, calculator. Do the following, uh, some calculations here we need to do. He said 70 weeks are determined. So that means from now, so the actual coming of Christ is 70 weeks. And uh, in the translation or in the language, weeks are um, similar to years. So actually it's uh, 70 weeks. So the week, seven. So 70 times seven is how much? Hmm? 490. So from now until the coming of the Messiah is 490 years. Okay? So this is what he told him. 70 weeks are determined for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression. To make an end of sin. To make reconciliation for iniquity. To see Christ. Okay. So you notice that there are three things. Transgression. Sins. Okay. And. Reconciliation for iniquity. A transgression. Means. Breaking a rule. Okay. So Christ when he comes. He's going to finish. Those breaking rules. And he's going to make an amend. A sin. Is. Missing a target. Okay. Reconciliation of iniquity. An iniquity. Something wrong that is done against God. Okay. So God. And, and you notice reconciliation. That means. That relation between. People and God. Is going to be reconciled. With the coming of Christ. So he's going to take away. Transgression, finish transgression, make an end to sins, and then reconcile us to God. To bring in everlasting righteousness, okay? To do the right thing. To seal up vision and prophecy. Vision and prophecies are to, uh, to tell us about the Messiah. So the coming after 490 years, the coming of the Messiah will be like, the end of those visions and prophecies. Done. All of them will be fulfilled. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Listen, guys. Uh, I'm going to jump to a point. I want you to. I don't want you to miss it. First of all, in verse 23, he says, "At the beginning of your supplication of the command went went out, and I have come to tell you." So he's telling him, once you opened your mouth and you started your prayer, your prayer got accepted. See here we are in verse 23, chapter 9. So verse 1, from, from the beginning of the prayer, Archangel Mike, uh, Gabriel is telling Daniel, once you opened your mouth, God accepted your prayer. Look, look how beautiful it is. So if okay. having this in our minds, when we pray, sometimes we pray, we think that our prayers doesn't go beyond the ceiling. No, but apparently it does. God listens to each prayer we make. <clears throat> um, the, the, the point I'm going to mention here in verse 24 about the 70 weeks, Daniel was not talking about when the Christ will come. That was not what he asked for. Did he ask about that? What, what was his, like, all his concern or about his prayer about what? When are we going back to Israel? Right? Because Jeremiah said 70 years and we are in year 66, 67. So are we almost there? That was the prayer. When are we going back? In three years, four years, five years? God give me a sign. 
Now, Archie, Archie Angel Gabriel is giving him a message about something else that he didn't ask for. Did he ask when the Christ is coming? He didn't ask that. However, God is revealing to Daniel some things beyond what he asked for. He will answer his question, by the way. He will tell him when it's going to happen. But he's giving him something more and above or beyond he asked for. He's giving him the ultimate great news about God, when God is coming, when God will incarnate and become a man and to come for our salvation. So he's telling him, how did we know that he's talking about Christ? How did we know? Listen to this. 70 weeks are determined for your people and for the holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins. Daniel should have said, I'm not asking about end of sins. But the, see the language that the, the, the angel is using. End of sins. To make reconciliation for iniquity. Okay? It's all about spiritual messages. To bring in everlasting righteousness. Everlasting righteousness. Who's, who's going to bring an everlasting righteousness? Only our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. Anything everlasting belongs to him. To seal up vision and the prophecy. From this simple words here, Daniel realized now that his, the angel is talking about something else. He's talking about someone is coming and to take our, our, our sins away and to give us an everlasting salvation. Who is that? God himself. When is he going to come? After 70 weeks. As Abuna said, a week represents a year. So after four, God or Gabriel is telling Daniel, after 490 years, the Christ will come, which is, as if you remember last time, we said the time of Daniel approximately 550 years before Christ. Now we are at the end of his life. So what? how many years left? Approximately 490 years. Did you, did I you have understand? a question. Oh. Yes. Um, so when you talk about sealing up prophecy, there are still end time prophecies. Like there's still like the, the book of Revelation. There's still other prophecies in the Old Testament about the end times. And including in Daniel, like I remember Amo gave a lesson a couple of weeks ago about the the four beasts in Revelations and the fourth beast that had the little horn that grew out of the head and three horns uh, fell before it. Like there are still like prophecies being fulfilled. So are those prophecies for like the end times, like the apocalypse, are those in a separate category or are they still part of the, I don't know, the continuation of the prophecies? Even though here in Daniel it says that the prophecies will, will end soon. Uh, just a question, you want to, sorry. No, don't pass me the, the, the top one. You pick this. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Good, John. So, um, at some point, I think we spoke about this that the coming of Christ, the coming of the Messiah, uh, is 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 the coming of the Messiah, and then it's divided into from the birth of Jesus Christ. To the second coming of Christ. Okay. So you want to think about it. Like in terms of time. Like from the coming of Christ. I'm sorry. The coming of the Messiah. Okay. Is the whole time. Of the coming of. The birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. To. The second coming of Christ. Okay, so there are two so sets all of problems. This that time we have. is called the coming of the Messiah. Does that yeah, mean two sets, right? All right, so two sets of prophecies that run parallel, like continue continue each other, right? Yes. So you want to think of it about like if you want to think of it, um, uh, for example, like you know, um, BC and AD. Like no, uh, uh, think of it like simply like here at the cathedral. You know how how long it is. Like sometimes, like the the bride comes and the groom, and they they go from the beginning of the cathedral and they start walking, right? 
from the okay. time they entered the door to the time they reach to the in front of the altar. Mm -hmm. This is all called what? The coming of the bride or the procession of the bride and the groom. Okay? Okay. But like this whole time, while the, the deacons are chanting, so you think that like the minute they enter, they start the procession until they reach the altar. Okay? okay. So it's like that. So the birth of Christ, Okay, until the second coming, this is the whole coming of the Messiah. Okay, thank you, Buona. Simple? Simple. Very good. Don't try to think too much. It's okay. Hard. Um, okay, sounds good. No, no. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, we think like, oh, it's so hard. It's. I rarely <laughs> think you have one. It's not a problem. <laughs> uh, okay, Mish. So, um... But this is the beautiful thing that what Sa'adil is saying here is that Daniel did not really ask for this. But the beautiful thing is that when he stood in front of God to pray and the minute he stood, you know, Gabriel was sent, but was sent, but Gabriel waited until Daniel finished his prayer. Right. Um, and the message is you are loved. You are loved, greatly loved. And you will see Christ. Okay? This is the two main messages, the two main things that we all need to experience every time we stand to pray, every time to come to church, every time I open my Bible, that I have to get this message that God loves me, that I am meeting the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, Continuing in verse 25, Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from going forth. The, uh, the prince. So there are two things. There is a, a, a building of Jerusalem, restoring and building Jerusalem. And then until the Messiah, the prince come. There shall be seven weeks, seven weeks, we said what, seven times, seven is 49, 49 years. So that will be Zerubbabel and Nehemiah to rebuild Jerusalem, okay? And 62 weeks, 62 weeks are how many years? 62 times seven 62 times 7. 4. 4. 34. Very good. And now listen to this. The street shall be built again and the wall even in trouble sometimes. And after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the... Um, the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood. Until the end of the war, the solutions are determined. Then he shall confirm in covenant with many, <clears throat> listen to this, for one week, but in the middle of the week. Middle of the week is what? Hmm? What's a half a week? No, half a week. Half, half, half a week. Is what? Okay, seven. Seven. Half of seven is what? Three and a half. Yes, very good. So if, if you think of it like seven years, seven years, seven years, seven years. Okay, so Christ, when he died on the cross, right, half of the seven. So it did not complete the 490. So at, did you get it? Okay, so you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he came and served for three, huh? Three years, right? So when he says half of the week, that means, you know, it, it did not reach all the way 490. 
okay? So count that like say, uh, what, uh, 480, 486 and a half. From the, that time, 486 years and a half. So that's half of the week. Does that make sense now? Looking at me like what? Did you get it? Half of the week is what? Hmm? Okay, so um say uh, uh the 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 sixty sixty two weeks. Sixty two weeks. Why is this so hard? <laughs> okay, sixty two weeks that means 62 increments of seven years, seven years, seven years. The last increment of the time, this, the last seven years, okay, it does not go all the way. Halfway of it, he will come. He will die at that time. Did you get it now? Okay. Got it? Okay. Abuna. Yes, it's a bit uh, mathematical. Yes. Yes. Um, so if um, these numbers are not symbolic, um, they're like pretty accurate. So why they are accurate that the because Jews... we know the history. Yeah. So why yeah. did the Jews not believe in Christ as like the Messiah? It's, yes. Like it's so clear. Yes. And this is, uh, thank you so much, Maya, because you're an excellent, excellent question. Because... As you know, Daniel is the head of the wise men in the kingdom of Babylon. Does the word wise men ring any bell for you? Hmm? There were not three. But <laughs> it just said wise men came from the east. Yes. So... Daniel being so famous, knowing all this calculations, knowing all this time, okay? And he's saying like the star will shine in the east, right? So they knew, all the wise men in the east, what Daniel told them that the Messiah will come at this appointed time. So at the appointed time, they saw the star and they said, yes, this is the time. And they went to Jerusalem to find this uh, born Messiah. Okay, so this is where actually it's coming from. This is how the, 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 the wise men came. But also the priests and the scribes and the Pharisees, they all also likewise actually knew the exact time. And we know that from actually... Um, the Gospels according to St. Matthew, right? When, um, when, when, the scribe, when Herod the king called the, the priest and inquired of the time and the place, and they told him, yes, this is the right time, and he is supposed to be born where? In Bethlehem of Judea. So they knew. Maryam, so the, the, the answer to your question, they knew the time, they knew the place, yet they failed to go and worship. Meanwhile, you have the wise men from the east coming all the way at the right time as well to worship. So in my life, I know God's commandment, yet I choose to break them. Yet I choose not to obey God. Okay. I want to have another question. Yes. About the uh, the midweek, uh, the, the Wednesday. Midweek. Yeah. Not Wednesday. The Wednesday. It's seven seven years. Could it be interpreted as Wednesday? And then that's part of the reason why we fast Wednesdays and Fridays because of the betrayal of Christ, or is that's that a different uh, lunch? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the end of the. Where's the end? 
Yeah, the covenant see. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many that happened for one week, yeah. but in the middle yeah. of the week. So Thursday is the middle of the week, and that's a covenant Thursday. Mm, that's not how we interpret. No, we interpret the years. But he's talking about the last week. Yes, the last week, the the, the last seven years. The last. So the covenant of the Eucharist on Thursday, Annie. No, no, it's not days. It's years. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Think All of right. it, years. So the last increment of seven years. I just want to clarify. Yeah. Because he started off saying seventy, then he broke it down and said seven until the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Right? And then 62. So that together is 69. Seven, 7 and 62. Yeah. Yes. And then so that one remaining at the end, he's saying didn't finish. Very good. Yes. Yes. So 7 plus 62. Yeah. 7 plus 62 is 69. 69. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Mungi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's talking about the last week which is the last seven years good let's finish this uh, chapter so that next week we're gonna and after we said okay he shall bring an end to 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 sacrifice an offering and on the wing of the abomination shall be one who makes desolate even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate so we know that the sacrifice on that day stopped. Stopped being accepted. But also it stopped later on in the year 70 AD by the destruction of Jerusalem. And since then, there is no sacrifice uh, being accepted or offered in Jerusalem. Okay. Um, of course, we can, if we have we had time, we would have switched a little bit in Luke to look into that, uh, what Christ said about this. Uh, but if you have the time, um, the the Lord Jesus Christ talks about this, and He says the uh, the desolation that was mentioned by Daniel. When you see it happening, you will see it. Run away and don't stay in Jerusalem. Uh, this is what is mentioned of it. Now we said he told him this, but now the beautiful part, the beautiful part is in chapter 10. When he meet Christ and Christ comes and touches him and tells him, stand up, Daniel. You want to see that, of course, but if you come next week, we'll be talking about that meeting uh daniel seeing uh christ coming and we'll talk about that in chapter 10 and 11 god willing glory be to god forever and ever amen any uh questions i'm gonna stop the recording so if you want to ask